Hi everyone, it's Manny from Vegan Rock Climbing. In this episode I want to show you how to approach campus board training when you're uh, pretty much a beginner in it, okay? When you've never tried it before. Campus board training for beginners. And for this purpose I've divided this video into three parts. In the first part I'm just going to show you some basic exercises which you can use to build up um, a little bit of, of basic strength on the campus board and to get used to the holds and stuff like that. Then I will talk a little bit about gripping techniques, okay, <clears throat> what you should use on the campus board and what you should not use. And then I'm, finally, last but not least, I'm going to talk about the, the stats of the campus board which I use in this video, okay, because you should know that every um, campus board is different. So I'm going to measure the distance between two leads and also the size of the leads and I'm going to tell you that so that you can compare it to your campus board if you have one in your gym, okay. So campus board training in general, what is it good for? I would say it's um, good for the dynamic power in your upper body, okay? So if you need to really make a far reach and um, to gain some momentum with that, okay, that's the campus board training, that's, uh, that's where the campus board training has its strength, okay? So <clears throat> of course you need that in, in overhanging terrain and when you, when you yeah, as I said, when you do dynamic moves. And another thing is, if, if you need to improve your contact strength, okay, your contact power. So let's say you, you have quite good dynamics, okay, you can, you can do far reaches, you can gain momentum and stuff like that, but, and you also reach the next hold, but then when you grab it, you mostly slip off, okay? That's because you just don't grab with enough speed to the next hold, which you get after a dyno, okay? And that's something that's the campus sport training also good for, to gain some contact strength, so to increase your speed with which you can close your fingers, so with which you can grab at the next hole, okay? Alright, one more thing before we start, the campus sport training puts a quite a dynamic force on your tendons and um, joints and stuff, okay? Which means it's you're very prone to injure yourself if you don't take if you don't do it carefully. Let's say like that, okay? So you should not start with campus board training too early in your climbing in general. I'm gonna give you some tips in the video, um, what measurements you can use to check if you're ready for it, and you should also use the right gripping techniques um, to to stay away from injury, okay? So yeah, as I told you, as I told you, I'm going to talk about in the about that in the video as well. Let's get started. I would say uh, you saw me in the background already the whole time, a little bit do, doing a little bit of a warm up. I never approach the campus board cold. Okay, I would not advise you to do that because that then you're risking even more injury. You're even more prone to injury then. So I always start with a little bit of climbing, let's say 10 minutes or so, to get everything warm, the tendons, the joints, and the fingers and stuff, okay? Get a little bit of a warm up in. And then, um, even then, I don't start right away with my campus board exercises. I first do some hangs on the lats, then I do some smaller dynamic moves, just to get everything used to the lats, to the holds and to warm everything up properly and <clears throat> yeah that's quite important because as i said before the campus board is a little bit of a risky exercise already for injury and stuff like that so you don't want to injure yourself and warming up is quite an important point in making sure that you don't injure yourself okay so after we warmed up, uh, I can show you already the first basic exercise for you if you're a beginner at the campus board and that is doing one, 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 okay? I don't know how to explain it in English very good, but you will see in my video in this clip here. Basically, it's just you grab a very low lead, okay? Then you move your, your hand one lead further and then you move from this lead even more one lead further with the other hand, okay? Just one, one, one. And as you can see, I'm doing it quite slowly, okay? I'm doing, first I'm moving my legs under the hand which is holding the lead so that all of my weight is on that hand and then I'm moving the other hand, okay? Then I move my weight um, on the other side again 
moving the next hand and so I proceed until I am at the top and then I'm going down again in the same fashion very slow all right so here I have this uh, I have this exercise one more time from a little bit of a side angle that you can imagine what's going on and I would say my basic campus sport drill for beginners is you just take one let and then you go as far as you get, okay? One, 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 one. If you reach the top, you go down again. If you reach the bottom again, you go up again. And you just go as far as you get, make three minutes rest and then go again as far as you get, make three minutes rest. And this 10 to 15 repetitions and that's a perfect beginner exercise perfect beginner campus board drill I would say okay <clears throat> and do it slow do it slowly um, by this way you you are not having so much dynamic force here you don't have a very coordinative um, a need for coordinative skills okay this comes all later when you're very used to it let's say you're very confident with it then you can of course increase the difficulty by adding some weight or by doing what I'm showing you in this clip here you can do the same thing also in a more speedy version okay like this duck, duck, duck. here I'm not waiting until my whole weight um, represented by my legs is moving under the hand which holds the lead I'm going to the next lead already for already earlier okay and quite fast duck, duck, duck. and this um, implies also a little bit of coordinative skills okay you have to think a little bit faster here but in the end you will um, notice that you're much more efficient in doing that, okay? You get less pumped and you are also going further, okay? You can do more moves in one repetition. <clears throat> and this is one way. Of course, it, needs a, it, it takes a little bit more strength because you have to do the dynamic move quite fast. But yeah, you can, you, can do, you can use this exercise to make it a little bit harder. And if you're already confident with that, you also can approach to make two twos, okay? And one approach exercise for this is this one here. I'm making two, one, two, one, two, one, two, okay? This way you don't have to have the power for the full two-two movement, but you can already get used to it by using an intermediate let, okay? And this is quite good to get um, into the direction of a little bit of a higher distance between two leads, all right? And that's what you want. You want to increase your dynamic power to make even further reaches. And of course, if you're used to it, then you can try with the slow method that I showed you before, making two twos, as in this clip here. Go down again, go up again, just go as far as you get, make three minutes rest, and again as far as you get and always three minutes rest and I would say 10 to 15 repetitions okay that will make a very good training and it will it, it will destroy you're doing a lot of moves here okay so you have to you have to keep in mind that your skin is going to be very wrecked very fast especially if you're a beginner <clears throat> And if you're confident with that, again, you can do the speedy version of it. Don't wait until the weight is on under your hand, okay? Just go to the next lead immediately. Duck, duck, duck. And here you can see that I'm much more efficient, I'm much faster and I can do a lot of more moves like that, okay? So well, I've just showed you some of the basic exercises, I would say, which you can use to get a little bit of use to the campus board in, in general. And now I want to show you some of the grip techniques which you should use on the campus board, okay? And what, and also what you should not use. I prefer this one. This is the four finger open grip. So that's how I call it now, <laughs> okay? There is no special name for it, I guess. As you can see, my, my point, pointer is straight here, okay? And that's what I always use on a campus board. This one here is the three finger open grip. This is even more ideal because this one is, here you have an even lower risk of injury, okay? But it's also harder to hold yourself like that, at least in my opinion. But if you can do it, then train with the three finger open grip on the campus board. What is also used by a lot of people is the half crimp, okay? Which you can see here. This one is the most aggressive grip type I would use on the campus board. I would never go much more aggressive because then the risk of injury is getting higher and higher, okay? So what you should not do, what I'm going to show you now, is 
do the full crimp, which means that you use your thumb also, okay, on the lead, to hold yourself, yourself on the lead. Here you have a lot of stress on your tendons, and if you do the dynamic moves like that, you will surely going to injure yourself. <clears throat> so you really, really want to avoid that. Again, this is my grip here, the four finger open grip, which I use. And now finally, I'm going to show you the um, the stats of this campus board. First I'm going to show you the distance between two leads. I think that was roughly 20 centimeters. The distance between two edges, okay. 20 centimeters, I don't know if it's much or if it's not much. I don't have so much comparisons with other campus boards. But yeah, 20 centimeters in distance. And here you have, uh, here I measured the um, size of the leads with the round, somewhere in between the rounding, okay, that's about 23 millimeters, I think. Here I measured the whole lead, okay, I think that was 26 millimeters in width, okay, 27.5. And then I measured the whole thing without the rounding at all, okay, so the rounding is quite big. I think without the rounding it was only something like 16 or, or 13 or something like that millimeters. Let's check that out. Okay, 13.5. Okay, so you can see that rounding takes quite a lot of space here. And that's good because you don't want, want to wreck your skin with a sharp edge. All right, and that's it basically for this tutorial. I hope you can um, compare it with your campus board now. So this was my post-workout snack. It was really good at the Asian shop. Yeah, and that's basically it for this video. I hope you like it. If you got something out of it, give it a like. And see you guys next time.